Rwanda, a nation rebuilt through passion, determination, forgiveness, and music. I really didn't know what to expect when we landed in Rwanda. I barely knew the other students I was traveling with, let alone anything about the country. I guess in my naivety, I thought that we would get off the plane and it would look like the scene at the beginning of The Lion King, when all of the animals gather around Pride Rock. And to some extent, we did get to see that side of Rwanda. We went on a safari and saw zebras, antelope, baboons, and warthogs. We climbed through caves as bats flew overhead. We spent time in rural villages, which looked like my preconceived image of Africa. But Rwanda had so much more to offer us than the images I had conjured up from American movies and pictures. What we saw when we got off the plane was the beautiful city of Kigali, masterfully built into the sides of the thousand hills that Rwanda is famous for. Everywhere we went, I was inspired by the people with whom we interacted. Whether they were a leading investor from abroad, a young entrepreneur, a local village leader, or a college student aspiring to work in finance, each person displayed a level of passion and determination that is superior to anything I've ever experienced. Everyone we met seemed to pursue what they were truly passionate about, either as a hobby or as a career. Sometimes in America, we get caught up in our own consumerism culture. Instead of choosing to follow our hearts, we look for jobs that will be more lucrative and will provide us with a secure future. Based on my interactions in Rwanda, the individuals we met did not seem nearly as concerned with money. Of course, they chose employment that would provide them with the basic necessities of daily life, but outside of that, people seemed much more concerned with finding happiness and fulfillment than becoming wealthy. The Rwandans we met shared their passion for their country by graciously showing us Rwanda's beautiful sights and openly discussing Rwanda's history. It was clear that each and every person we met felt that they were a part of the incredible growth and development Rwanda has experienced in the 20 years since the genocide against the Tutsi. Many individuals whom we met shared their personal narratives of how they got to where they are today. Our trip leader, Annie, told us her story of being a Rwandan refugee living in Uganda who returned soon after the genocide. Her story was infused with determination, determination to help her country as she voluntarily helped save orphan children, determination to become a leader in the tourism industry as she visited the Ministry of Education daily until they gave her a scholarship to study abroad, and determination to share Rwanda's story as she left her comfortable job in hotel management to establish her own tourism company. What I realized as we continued to meet Rwandans was that Annie's story was not unique. We met students who had recently graduated high school and been accepted into Bridge to Rwanda, a gap year program that helps them get accepted to colleges abroad. These 18-year-old students spent countless hours over the course of the year studying for the TOEFL and the SATs and working on their college applications, while still finding time to participate in community service activities. At the end of their gap year, they are brave enough to move to a foreign country for four years to receive an education that they are determined to use to better their home country upon their return to East Africa. The determination we saw seemed to come from the depths of a dark and recent history that Rwandans are resolute to overcome and never relive. The passion that the Rwandan people displayed for their personal work and their country and their unwavering determination to come out of the genocide a stronger and more united people is not solely a testament to the individual people we met, but to the government as well. When Paul Kagame and the Rwandan Patriotic Front took over Kigali in July of 1994, ending the genocide that had killed nearly one million people, they decided to preach the messages of unity and reconciliation. Instead of fighting for revenge, they fought to become one Rwanda again, as it had been before colonialism. Their passion for Rwanda and their determination to move forward has spread throughout Rwandan society. I am still in awe of our trip to the reconciliation village where we heard a genocide perpetrator and survivor speak side by side despite the fact that the man had murdered the woman's husband. I have truly never seen or experienced this level of forgiveness and until my trip to Rwanda believed that something of this nature was beyond human capacity. But I am slowly beginning to grasp the way in which determination to move forward and passion in one's country can help breed this level of forgiveness. I also noticed a pattern in the way that music helped people forgive and heal. Earlier in the year, I wrote my This I Believe essay for our class about the power of music and talked about my experience in the Smilebringer Singers and how I had connected with the elderly and children with special needs through music. 
I did not grasp the full range of the power of music until I was in Rwanda. When we visited the Reconciliation Village, members of the community sang and danced for us, and I imagined that when the village was first established, music helped survivors and perpetrators heal, but also brought them closer together. Every time we arrived at a new village, we were welcomed by singing and dancing. Although there was often a language barrier between us and our hosts, music, a shared language, showed us that we were welcome. At the youth village, one of the students we met sang an original piece for us, and then the students asked me to perform for them, so I sang Fly Me to the Moon, an American classic. His piece even included some, some of the words of a Hebrew prayer that he had learned from other visitors. It was so beautiful to hear him combine his native language with Hebrew, a language that connects me to my history and people. It made me feel right at home in Rwanda. Similarly, when we visited the coffee plantation, we sang Hail to the Victors for the community, and they in turn sang a song for us about God being in this place. Despite the fact that we live oceans away from each other, we were able to use music to share our cultures and express our joy in being together. Our trip to Rwanda helped me put my life in perspective and think about the impact I want to make on the world. At our meeting with Josh, a public health professional and co-founder of Heaven Restaurant, I thought about how I could develop sustainable solutions that help countries develop themselves as opposed to the typical NGO model that encourages outsiders to develop a foreign country. As a new college graduate, this trip reminded me to pursue my passions and to give myself fully to the things that I care about. It also reminds me that I'm only one person, and although I often felt mediocre and small compared to some of the incredible individuals we met, it also made me excited. I may not know what my contribution to the world will be, but I know that the real world is full of potential.